previous episodes, we learned the basics and now we have a perfectly installed camera with the proper licenses and Karman engines. We will continue with the setup of the optics, which means what and how the camera sees exactly. As you already know, we have single and dual sensor camera models equipped with either an HDX or a full HD resolution sensor. In this video, we will concentrate on the dual sensor camera models because the main sensor is present in every camera, but the secondary sensor is optional. So, let's start with the primary image sensor. We have two types of sensors, the HDX resolution and the full HD resolution version. We will show an example of a good setup on a full HD version, but the basics are the same for the HDX version as well. Once we get started with the camera's graphical user interface, the main window will be the live view section. This section is responsible for setting the best image quality for the desired project, mainly in order to forward the best possible images to the AMPR module inside the camera and read the license plates without an issue. The first setting which needs to be set is the mode of the brightness control. So click to the mode option. If you wish to use the camera in an indoor condition where the environmental factors are constant, then the manual mode is probably the best. It is indicated with a big M letter on the top left corner of the live view. If you are using the camera outdoor, then you should turn on the automatic mode, which will help the camera to adjust the constantly changing light environment conditions. The camera will indicate with a little sun icon on the top left corner if it is in day mode and with a little moon icon if the camera is in night mode. Then, we can choose the environment condition from parking, city, highway or freeway. For this, we will choose freeway. The region of interest is responsible for the adaptation of different changing conditions and we have an option to change this region to a specified area instead of the full image. If you have environmental factors, such as the sky, trees or buildings within the image, we advise to set this region of interest for the road where the license plates will be appearing, so the camera will handle the brightness control within this zone much better. Now, we need the perfect brightness balance, and for that, click on Exposure. Here, we can set the shutter time and the game value for both day and the night modes. If you are staying in manual brightness control mode, then you will only see one shutter and one game value to set and also the iris option as well. In automatic mode, the iris is set automatically. If you increase the shutter value a little and the gain as well, it will lighten up the image. The shutter itself needs to be as low as possible, especially when fast vehicles are appearing. The lower the shutter value, the more faster cars can be catched and their license plates will still remain visible and won't be distorted. The gain should be as low as possible as well to eliminate the noise from the image. Make sure that you choose the best values for each setting which could be applied to your installation. Next, go into the color section where you will be able to choose the color mode from automatic, color and gray. In automatic mode, the camera will produce colored images in daytime and black and white images at nighttime. When the mode is color, the camera will have colored images anytime and when set to grey, the image will be black and white all the time. Choose the most fitting option for your installation. Also, you can turn on color correction if you want to have more real toned images. Next, we need a sharp and crystal clear image. For that, go into the optics section. First, use the zoom to zoom in or out to get the proper character height for the license plates. The proper character heights are 20 pixel for European standard and 24 pixel for Arabian standard license plates. But you can have more details regarding these pixel sizes in the installation manual found in the description. To set the best sharpness for the image, set the focus area first. Clicking on the focus area button, set the region of interest and hit autofocus. This will calibrate the best available focus value. If you want, you can save this zoom focus pair under the presets tab and you can try different setups regarding the zoom and focus. 
to find the best option. And with the presets, you are free to switch back to the best setting anytime immediately. We have a great image for the daytime, but how about nighttime? The license plates need some additional lightning, which is provided by the built-in illuminator inside the camera. It is an 850 nanometer infrared light, which will perfectly illuminate the license plate at night. Also, there is an option to order the cameras with white LEDs for the projects, which require colored images at nighttime. For that, go into the flash menu. Here, the first thing to change is the filter to automatic if it's not in it. With that, the camera will allow the illumination to pass the sensor's filter and be seen. If you turn this to ear cut, the illumination won't pass the filter and the live view won't show the illumination at all. We can set the desired values for day and night illumination with the flash intensity day and flash intensity night values. If you want to lighten up every second frame with a lower intensity than the first frame, you will need to configure the parity flashing function as well. The parity flashing is making sure that both reflective and non-reflective license plates are captured and read. With the first high-intensity frame illumination, the non-reflective license plates will become visible even at pitch darkness, while with the lower intensity second frame illumination will capture the reflective plates as well. Important to note that the parity flashing value is the percentage of the previously set flash intensity value, so calculate with that. If you wish to change the overall brightness, contrast and saturation of the image, just navigate into the image section where you are free to modify these values. But be aware that we advise to leave them on default values to not affect the AMPR reading process from the images. We have an advanced settings option as well, which allows you to lighten up the image a little more if it is too dark with the low light mode option for day and night. But make sure that you are only using it when necessary. The higher this low light mode is, the more noisy the image will be. Also, you can change here the black and white level, the gamma if the camera is in manual mode, and the JPEG quality as well with what you can improve or decrease the generated image quality for the event. It does not affect the recognition at all, it will only produce higher or lower sized images to send to the desired destination, but we will discuss that in a later episode. And now let's talk about the secondary optics. We have cameras which equipped with two optics and with both being an HDX or a full HD sensor. If the secondary optics is present, we often recommend to use it as an overview image generator. For that, every before mentioned setting are crucial and needs to be set similarly, the only difference is the optics section. For an overview function, we do not want to focus on the vehicle's license plate, instead the vehicles itself and the surroundings. So set the zoom to see more than one small part of the road and make sure that the environment is visible. It is a good option if you need to attach a full overview image to an event generated by the camera. This was one option to use the secondary sensor, however, there is an option to make it a second level AMPR sensor to have a similar image as the first sensor, but this time it is used as a backup. If for some reason the primary imager is not making a good image, it still have a secondary AMPR ready image to work with. With this, no license plate will be lost. And for that, you only need to configure the secondary sensor the same as the primary sensor. And we should wrap up this episode where we learned how to set the live view images and what are the most crucial parts. But wait, how we take images with the camera? That's a good question you might ask, and the answer in short is with the trigger. And what does it mean exactly? You will find out in the next episode of this Vidar How to Video series. Stay tuned. Thank you.